I'm honored to be here today with Drs. Bill Mobley and Steve Wagner from the UC San Diego Department of Neurosciences. And as we like to say, we've got a hot paper. So that's what we're here to discuss today. Welcome. Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, let's start with you, Dr. Mobley. You have mentioned that this not only shows a new approach, but some new, new findings that relate to both Down syndrome and Alzheimer's disease. So take us through the basics, if you would. Well, good, thanks a lot. Um, what we did was in a mouse model of Down syndrome, a model that has some of the same genetic abnormalities as people with Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. You know that Down syndrome is trisomy 21. These right. people have an extra copy of a perfectly normal chromosome. And there are a lot of problems that they have, but the neurological problems are the most significant. They have problems with cognition, learning and memory. And then when they become older, uh, everybody with Down syndrome develops the brain changes of Alzheimer's disease. In fact, people say that you can't really tell whether this is a Down syndrome brain slice or a slice from a person with Alzheimer's disease that didn't have Down syndrome. So does, they have a very similar pathology. Does that mean that the person with Down syndrome necessarily has Alzheimer's disease or it's just uh, very much alike in the way it evolves? It's a good question it probably means that the pathology, the pathogenesis, the yes. way the brain gets sick is related, if not identical, related. Right. But it's a really good question. Does having that pathology uh, by microscopy, does it mean you're demented? And the answer is not everyone appears to get the dementia. Everybody with, not everybody with Down syndrome gets that, but most do if they live long enough. So by age 60, probably more than 60% will have had the dementia. Okay. So, of course, you'd love now to use that knowledge of the biology of Down syndrome to understand it both for the well-being of people with Down syndrome but also people with Alzheimer's disease. Okay. And the mouse model is the way we do that. It's very difficult uh, to do studies in people that are as informative as studies in mice. So then what is your next step in terms of relating mm -hmm. this to people? First, we have to understand the biology. Okay. And so what we learned in this mouse is that it had the loss, the, the, the degeneration of neurons in very much the same part of the brain as people with Down syndrome and Alzheimer's disease. It's a place called the locus ceruleus. This nucleus provides the axons, the processes that release norepinephrine in the brain at the cortic cortical level and hippocampus. And what we saw in the mouse was that these neurons were disappearing. So by age six months in the mouse, these neurons were gone, or at least markedly smaller and fewer in number. So that was great because it does mimic the pathology. But then you say, well, what's going on? How's this happening? And what are the changes in the brain that you see? So what we found was that even though the neurons were degenerating at six months, in fact, their processes were very likely degenerating before that time. Mm -hmm. And what was very exciting is that there was a, a compensatory change in hippocampus where the receptors for this neurotransmitter seem to go up. So we asked the question, and this is work that Ahmad Salehi did. He's really the mastermind behind it. Could we now see if we could add that compound back and make those neurons respond again in the way they would under normal conditions? And the answer, both in a physiology experiment and in the mouse, was they would respond. So we could give this compound back and restore behaviors that are very much dependent upon this neurotransmitter, norepinephrine. Okay. And then, Dr. Wagner, you hear this. We've got the basics on it. With all your extensive research in Alzheimer's, what kind of hope or what next for you from your perspective? No, I've um, <clears throat> had a lot of discussions with, with uh, both Bill and Ahmad, and <clears throat> obviously we have, um, like Bill mentioned, there's a, a nice uh, Down syndrome animal model. We have a number of, in fact, right here at UCSD, Eliezer Maslia has, has a number of, of very uh, suitable Alzheimer's disease transgenic mouse models, which really mimic the, uh, the pathology of Alzheimer's disease quite nicely, at least some of the major components of it, like neuritic plaques. And 
One of the things that um, I think would be very useful would be to look at this in terms of both from a, a behavioral perspective as well as in combination with the types of compounds that we're working with, um, which are more uh, disease modifying. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a real need in Alzheimer's for better um, synaptic augmentation beyond colonomimetics and um, Obviously, there's quite a bit of effort underway in both the pharmaceutical industry as well as in academia and the local biotech communities um, to try to fill these needs. So I, I think that it's, as far as I'm concerned, although this, this compound is obviously uh, being tested in the clinic, um, the next step for AD would probably be to do some animal model studies um, that we could do very quickly. and. Um, I'm very optimistic that we would uh, see some things based on the um, quite remarkable findings that, that are now going to be published very, very soon. And in that uh, publishing, we also mention a uh, connection to fibromyalgia, a drug that's already being used. How, mm -hmm. how strong does that play into your findings? How strong? Well, the, it was th this company called Chelsea Therapeutics made their compound available to us for the mouse studies. And uh, we were very grateful to them for doing that. And of course, we're excited uh, at the possibility that you know it may be possible to work with them. But what, what Steve just learned today is that in fact, they've had a recent trial that has shown promise. And so I guess what we know about the compound is you can give it to people safely. That's right. And in fact, have some therapeutic benefit. Now, this was not a trial of Alzheimer's disease or Down syndrome, it's a trial of blood pressure problems, orthostatic hypotension, but maybe Steve say a little bit more about what they found. Well, it, it was, um, first of all, it was done somewhat differently than what um, Ahmad's paper showed. It was done in the absence of carbidopa. This, this study, which, which is published in the Downs model, was done with the, uh, in the presence of a peripheral decarboxylase inhibitor, so you really uh, didn't activate the drug peripherally. And what Bill just mentioned was the trial that looked very, very exciting um, that was um, announced just very recently by Chelsea uh, for orthostatic hypotension um, uh, showed clear significant benefit. So the, the droxydopa part of the drug, at least peripherally in orthostatic hypotension, seems to have worked quite well in a phase three trial. Now it hasn't, um, I don't know the status of the, I, I know the drug is being fast tracked by the FDA so there's a good chance that that the droxydopa will be available but um, for the types of diseases that Bill and I are interested in, um, we would have to s wait and see the results of the fibromyalgia study. In that particular study which is currently in phase two, they're doing it almost identically to how uh, uh, Bill and Ahmad uh, carried out the uh, Downs mouse studies, meaning that they did it with the uh, carbidopa. So it was a uh, combined trial where you, you limit the act, act, activation of the compound of the prodrug to the brain. So now if, if, if that compound shows safety, which I'm sure it will since it was approved for phase two, um, then there's a good chance that um, that if these animal studies are are successful, um, that you could possibly move into humans with these types of drugs for other indications like uh, Downs and Alzheimer's. Okay, so from the perspective, I know you work with your colleagues at Stanford. Yes. Do you continue to go forward with Stanford, or is this more of a UC San Diego uh, situation where mm -hmm. you've adapted mm -hmm. it, or mm -hmm. what, what's the next step there? We'll continue to collaborate, of course, but I think the emphasis now needs to be on building a very strong program down here at UCSD. And I have to say, I've just been here since June, so just a few months, but I'm incredibly impressed at the quality of the science and the clinical medicine here, I think this is the best place to develop this new way of thinking about Down syndrome and Alzheimer's disease. And I think this is the place where we ought to now do some more uh, studies in mice and then where we ought to develop with colleagues the idea that perhaps we could get this uh, drug or drugs like it moved into the clinic Quickly. for these sure. groups. And Paul Azen, who's also a co-author on the paper, is yes. going to be very helpful with that. He's a, a clinical trials pro. He's part of our Alzheimer's disease clinical uh, center and uh, just a, a fantastic uh, scientist and doctor 
and uh, we'll be talking closely with Paul about moving things forward. We're very excited by this, yes. and we think it represents an important new avenue to helping people uh, who need help. Okay, excellent. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. you. Dr. Steve Wagner, Dr. Bill Mobley. Thank you. And we'll be back, I'm sure, with another hot paper very soon. Great.